the Gonzo Fest started with basically an idea we had to build a little park outside. Uh, one of a lawsuit with CBS Corporation to cut down uh, the big gaudy uh, signs that we had out in the property. Just huge, out of placement uh, advertisement signs that we just didn't want in the neighborhood anymore. So when we took it down, we decided, well, let's let's do something nice out here in the in the, in the, in the grassy you knoll where that once stood. Uh, one of my buddies, Joe Winley, who works for me, said, Denny, why don't you put a statue of Hunter S. out there? And of all those conversations we had on how great Hunter was to the city and, and what the city's not given in return to acknowledge um, the impact he had on journalism and just a way of life, uh, we decided, well, let's put the statue up. Shortly thereafter, someone approached me from the brewery, Flying Dog Brewery, out of uh, Maine and said, you know, we do a Gonzo Fest and I think you guys should, should, should jump on board. So we decided, okay. Um, I said, I'm going to do this, but I have to ask one person if it's okay. And uh, I said, if it's okay with him, I'll do it. And weeks later, I got a call out of the wind from that one person. It was Ron Whitehead. He said, Denny, you do good things at Monkey Ranch. You work kind of hard. He's like, you, you haven't gotten your recognition like you deserve it. He said, so whatever you're into, he's like, I'm into it. I said, well, thanks, Ron, because we want to throw this festival. And we want to call it the Gonzo Fest. Um, after we got the final okay on it, uh, that's when it all started to happen. The, uh, the musicians stepped in. Um, everyone just decided to do it for the love and the cause. Um, before it was over with, Anita Thompson came in. Um, she, she, it's a gift to have her here today. So, um, one story that happened last night that really, really hit close to home. We got a phone call. And this lady said, hey, I, she said, I got, I got something you guys need tomorrow. And I said, well, what is it? She said, well, me and my mother uh, fought really hard to save what the old Mill High School is, just to save it from being demolished. And in that process, my mother had worked at Mill, and she uncovered some paperwork. And they were all the old disciplinary actions that Hunter was written up for. There's like 22 of them. Okay. Appa apparently, on June 10th, 1950, or maybe allegedly, apparently, perhaps, most likely, Hunter threw firecrackers in the study hall floor, <laughs> perhaps pulled Cage out for future use, and recommended transfer. And on the back, Hunter somehow wrote, and this is in pencil, hand printed, June 10th, 1953. If I have one more trouble with mail, I will ask for a transfer to another school. Hunter Thompson. Oh, he scratched out. Oh, he scratched out on my word of honor. I pledge myself not to cut school or any period or leave the premises without permission again this school year. <laughs> That's priceless. One thing Lowell has not done is, if people in, in the city see, you know, we've, we've honored the great Muhammad Ali as we should, we've, we've, we've honored Pee Reese, um, but they haven't given back the, the justice to Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, in honoring these these, uh, these great icons of our city, they've put murals on the side of the buildings downtown. And, you know, many times it's been tried uh, to pass the mural for Hunter, and this committee seems to always vote it down. We decided on our own to create our own mural on the side of the Monkey Wrench in honor of Hunter S. Thompson and unveil that today, October 16th, 